In this video, we're going to have a look at some of the new things that came out as part of Power BI September 2025 update, including features like some of the Copilot updates, enhanced DAX time intelligence, and UDFs. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's jump in. So let's start with some of the Copilot updates this month, and there's quite a lot similar to the other months. So let's do a quick rapid fire of the things that they've added or enhanced. The standalone Copilot experience is now enabled by default. So if you have the capacity for it, you will see it on the web experience by default. You can opt out of this experience by turning the setting from on to off manually, which doesn't seem very intuitive, but for now it lets them know that you want to manually opt out or opt in if your data is not prepped for AI yet. When you use Copilot, Power BI now auto assigns workspaces with Copilot capacity to streamline the user experience. You can now save explorations in pro workspaces. So this is basically the Power BI Lite experience that lets your users to create and explore the data on their own with some light report editing. This feature is now available for pro users as well. And lastly, Power BI items will now show up when you search for them using the Microsoft 365 search. An enhanced version of the time intelligence feature has been added in Power BI. This basically allows you to define custom calendars directly within Power BI, let you do things like setting your own groupings, which makes it easier to do time-based calculations. They showed a few examples of when you'd use this, which is normally would be when you want to use a different calendar type, it will allow you to assign associated columns to them. So this is basically for scenarios where you're using different types of calendars, or maybe you want to calculate based on fiscal date. To be honest, I'm not too familiar with this feature yet, but everything that they've showed so far is kind of a problem that's already been solved by creating your own calendar table, which is how I typically recommend people set their calendars up. I'll dive deeper into this feature in one of my next videos to see if it's actually worth trying this out. Performance Analyzer is now available to use on the web. This feature is useful to analyze report load times and improve performance. And recently I found myself using it for other purposes like generating queries. So it's Good to know that you can now do this from the web without needing Power BI Desktop. Translitical flows are now enabled by default. So this is a feature that came out a few months ago and I've not had a chance to look at it yet. This feature essentially lets you perform tasks directly from your Power BI reports. These could be things like sending notifications, triggering workflows, or even updating records, which you previously couldn't do from Power BI. A few features went into general availability this month. Editing semantic models on the web is one of the big ones. This one lets you do most of your Power BI development from getting data, transforming them via Power Query Editor, editing your DAX, managing your relationships, all without Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop is obviously still far superior, which gives you access to all the modeling features in Power BI. But if you're only after the core or basic features, this is definitely a game changer. TMDL also went into general availability this month. This feature lets you programmatically write DAX and update semantic models via code. I found the most use of it when you want to do bulk or repetitive tasks, which is much easier and faster than doing it from the user interface. The NFC tag support also went into general availability this month. This is basically the feature that allows your mobile phones to tap NFC tags in the real world and pass data into your Power BI report. This is handy for real world scenarios like you know, working in a shop floor and trying to get information about certain products on the shop floor. And while I did cover this feature already in one of my old videos, I didn't realize it's been in preview all this time, but now it's in general availability. And finally, one of the biggest updates this month, at least for me, are the UDFs, user defined functions. Power Query has long supported creating your own custom functions. And I used it a lot in the past for things like converting currencies or calculating work days and things like this. But DAX never really gave you the ability to create your own custom functions. This month changes that. You can now create your own custom functions and reuse them across your semantic model. So similar to how the Power Query UDFs work, you define the name of your function 
as DAX. You set the parameters that it requires, and then you set the return value for it. Then, like any other function, you simply type the name of the function and off you go. The community has already started creating really cool stuff with these UDFs, like this one, where it utilizes UDFs to adjust settings of a custom SVG without dealing with the SVG bloat at all. Or this one that shows you how you can easily manage your icons using UDFs. So this feature really shines and is best used for scenarios where you have calculations that you repeatedly type out. UDFs are a great way to centralize and manage these into one place. I did see some community reports of this feature having bugs, so it's a good way to remember that this is also a preview feature. So personally, I would wait a month or two before I start using it with my production reports. 